Joseph's eloquent biography of his master, Sheikh Muhammad al Hajj. Murabit al Hajj would appear to many in modern society to be a primitive, a simple Bedouin living in a tent. Yet his spiritual, emotional, and intellectual development should compel us to question our assumptions and see the shortcomings of our own civilization when compared to the desert culture that produced him. For this simple man was a grammarian, logician, rhetorician, theologian, jurist, judge, leader of a clan, father, husband, traveler, mystic, and a profound and pious human being. He may seem an anachronism in an age racing towards transhumanism and metaverses, though not metaphysics. In today's technology-driven societies in which computers mediate everything, our reality and our relationships, our financial transactions and our consumer choices, our memory and our history, and even our pursuit of knowledge and wisdom, we would do well to remind ourselves of what can be achieved without modern technology. Murabat al-Hajj lived an unmediated life, governed by the sacred monotony of diurnal existence, telling time with shadows on the ground, or celestial clockworks in the night sky. He learned, preserved, and transmitted ancient knowledge to others and, contemplating, and contemplated the meaning of being a fully realized human being in complete submission to his creator. Murabit al-Hajj was a simple and sagacious man of immense wisdom, an anomalously learned nomad content and grateful for the gift of life, who used his time on earth to occupy himself with what concerned him and to share the gift of his vast knowledge to edify those around him. He had penetrated the mysteries of the world and its temporality and set his sights on a far greater, far, far more interesting arena of our inner world. May God sanctify his soul. And here ends my introduction. Thank you. And I think the thing that I, the biggest, one of the biggest gifts that I got from them is that you don't need anything to survive in this world. I mean, the homeless prove it every day, mm. you know, but, but they really are people completely divested of dunya. Yeah. I mean, everything they own is usually in a chest that they put on a donkey or a camel. We moved three times when I was there because they don't, they're not nomadic anymore. Right. So, but during that, and one morning, everybody was just packing. And I said, what, what's happening? And they said, Murabta had said, we're moving today. <laughs> and that's the way it was uh, because of the water tables. So they're, they're an extraordinary people. I think they're anonymously, they're the only really educated Bedouin in the world. I don't know of any other uh, Aboriginal peoples that are educated. And, you know, I remember once Murab Hajj was teaching about, you know, there's this whole concept of atomism in, in uh, Kalam. And he was explaining what they call the Jauhar al-Fard, which is the indivisible atom. It's the Greek atom. It's not the, um, the modern atom, which can be divided, but it's the Greek atom, the, this idea that it's the undivided, and he was trying to explain to this young man who was studying, and he what he just didn't understand it. So he 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 picked up some dust, and there was a ray of light, and he blew it into the ray of light. And you could see all the motes mm -hmm. in the light. He said, if the veils were lifted, you'd see the whole world like this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. That was such an amazing demonstration. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ibn Habib uses that same imagery in, right. in, his in the Diwan. Diwan. Yeah. Exactly. Well, the motes are very interesting, yeah. and they are used haba. And the Quran says that in the end of time, everything will be haba manthur. It will just be motes just spread everywhere. Yeah. Uh, when you when you went back to the West, I mean, 
What I was very happened? disoriented when I yeah. came back. Like it took me because I went, you know, I left. I mean, you know, I, I, I went from California to England first, and then I went to the UAE, and then I went to West uh, to North Africa first. I was in Morocco and Algeria, was studying there, and then I went to Mauritania, and the whole time period was about 10 years. So when I came back, I. It was just very strange to be back and to, and I and I actually never planned on coming back. I mean, my I made hijrah. Like I, my intention was not to come back, but I, but I I ended up coming back. And um, you know, life has its own. You, you just follow your. You know, uh, Ahmed Zarroqi said, "Salam li Salma." You know, di rahaythu darat wa tbahri ahl qadri si rahaythu sarat. Surrender to Selma and go where she goes, and accept the winds of destiny, and let them take you where they take you. Did you feel that you had to come back to the West, or what you? I didn't. I mean, I just, yeah, I didn't. Um, yeah, I came back. I mean, my original intention was actually to study medicine, go back to Mauritania, because there was so much medical need there, mm -hmm. and that—that's actually was my intention. So I came back, and I worked with the Hashem C. That's who I think you knew. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for, so I studied with him for a couple of years, and then I, and then he asked, told me to go to nursing school. Mm -hmm. So that was my original really intention. But then there was, uh, you know, one thing led to another here. Right. Telling stories is really important, and I that, that's why I think what you've done is is such an important because these are real people. We met them, we saw them. Yeah. The, most of the people that you, you showed on those, we both met yeah. the majority yeah. of them, and and they they. You, one of the things about them is they live transparent lives. So that idea of the shadow, you know, Jung had this whole concept that the shadow develops alongside the other self. But these people are people that lived. Murab Hajj, his tent was open 24/7. Yeah. You know, yeah. there was no there was no shadow self there. Right. There was just you yeah. know a wise human being living right. a daily like I could know. Wherever I was, anywhere in the world, if I knew what time it was in, in Mauritania, I would know exactly what he was doing. Mm -hmm. The regularity of his life really, really struck me. Yeah. Yeah, uh, because the thing about these people is they have a consistent practice. Their spiritual practice is just, it's like Sheikh Abdul Bin Bayah, no matter where he goes, he's, a, he's one of the few people I know that works out air. He, he always does it according to the prayer because he wants to do the minimum amount of prayers in the air. So he always, mm -hmm. you know, schedules his flights based on the prayer time. But he, I, he will always, wherever he is, between Asr and and uh, Isha, it's just, it's that time is just dedicated to his practice. And then between uh, before Fajr until Shuruq, it's just consistent yeah. wherever he goes, no matter where. And all the Murabitun are like that. The yeah. Mauritanian ulama. They all practice that. It's something that really struck me about yeah. them. They're so consistent in that practice, and that's why I, I like that term "sacred monotony" because mm -hmm. it, you know, the the word in Arabic for monotony is "rataba," which is yeah. where we get "ratib" from. Ratib, yeah, yeah. Like it's, word, yeah. yeah, it's that consistent mm -hmm. thing. And then the other thing that I think is consistent. And I know you have this experience as well. Is that they're very real. And 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 Allah uh, Allah says in the Quran in Tawbah He says, "Ya uh, yuhaladina amnu attaqullaha wa kunum asadiqi." Have taqwa, have this pious awareness of Allah, this conscientiousness, reverence for God, and be with the truthful ones. Yeah. And and that sitq, mm -hmm. which is, I mean, the closest person to to the Prophet Sallallahu was called Siddiq. Like that's the quality after the prophets. Yeah. The Siddiqun are the next group yeah. that are mentioned in in that uh, in that hierarchy, and so Sidq is that's what you you get from them is that there's just that real sincerity that you it's palpable, yeah. and the prophet said La Allah You know we don't make any claims about you know who's um, but. But we 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 you know we have these beliefs about them and uh, and then their hisab is with Allah subhanahu wa taala. But they have these consistent things that are very interesting. Even though they come from 
Malaysia and Morocco, it's amazing. The yeah. cultures are completely different, and yet there's these qualities that are constant. <laughs>